Hello, this is Shushankar and I welcome you to my next video and as I told in my last part we will deal with recursions using recursion using functions and uh, once again this video has been recorded, uh, recorded at 720p so please adjust your YouTube uh, player settings uh, for your uh, comfortable viewing now recursion is uh, something which is very critical and fundamental in programming particularly <coughs> when you deal with certain uh, things like traversal of binary trees then it becomes very useful and very handy and it also reduces code a lot now <coughs> certain languages like Lisp or uh, Haskell or say Scala which are known as functional programming languages they use recursion pretty heavily so <coughs> we will again calculate factorial which we had calculated earlier this time the difference would be we will use functions now what is recursion that is the first question recursion is a function calling itself so as you can see you might have noted till now that uh, there is a function called fact here and there is the definition and the fact is calling itself here at line number 25 the fact is calling itself so i take input uh, of an integer and then pass it to function fact and then i simply print whatever that function prints here as unsigned long long so now suppose user enters 5 then 5 is not equal to 0 so I this return statement will execute now so this will become 5 and this will become 5 and this becomes 4 but hang on return will not complete because there is a function call so this has to be evaluated before return can actually return so what essentially it will become is factorial which is 5 multiplied by fact of 4 and then when it will hit fact of 4 this will become 4 multiplied by fact of 3 so you see how this will look like fact 5 then 5 multiplied by fact of 4 then 4 multiplied by fact of 3 then 3 multiplied by fact of 2 and so on as long as it hits 0 once it hits 0 what happens is it will start hitting the else part and then it will return 1 so for 0 it returns 1 now what happens is it 1 goes here 1 comes here rather for fact 0 so 1 was there 1 multiplied by fact of 0 so it becomes 1 multiplied 1 and then the return actually now it can return because it has received the value of fact 0 so it returns 1 and now here it was waiting for the value of fact 1 so it received 1 so it will multiply with 2 and then it will go back and go multi get multiplied by 3 and then multiplied by 4 and then 5 and then eventually you will see the result will be 120 which will be printed here now a few more things about this why I have used unsigned long long is because factorials grow pretty fast but even with unsigned long long which is actually how much um, 64 bits right so 64 bits means you have got 16 exabyte roughly equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power uh, 19 roughly um, let me recalculate so uh, 32 is 4 gigs so 4 into 10 to the power 9 approximately yes 1.6 into 10 to the power 19 so <coughs> even with this unsigned long long you won't be able to actually calculate big very big factorials so let us try to calculate these so let's say i want to say 15 okay so we got so let's try with 20 so we got now this number if you look carefully this is very very close to our desire now if we try 21 it will not work why because it it is how many digits it has got 4 4 8 and 4 12 and 16 and 17 18 no way if you multiply with the 21 it will exceed so you see four zeros which were there here 
one because of 5, one because of 10, one because of 15 and one because of 20. So those zeros are gone now. So definitely this factorial value is wrong. It has rounded, it has uh, rotated in the unsigned long long cycle. So how do you circumvent this? Now this goes beyond the scope of standard C programming. What you need is something called arbitrary precision library, something like GMP. So for example, I'll just show you what uh, GMP is. Okay, bad typing, but still we'll go there. So you need something like this. But this is certainly beyond the scope of C programming as of now. But one day I'll certainly create videos for that. So you see how beautiful this is. Should look at this diagram very carefully and should see how stack uh, goes. So first, this side flow will happen, and then when fact zeros are getting calculated, this side flow will happen. I have tried to denote it, but I don't think it is very neat. So if I do like this, um, still not that difficult to represent it so if I do like this and I do like this and then I'll need another line I mean it's just like I'm trying to do ASCII art here <laughs> so okay looks much neater now okay so this is what happens when you do stack winding and unwinding and uh, happens in uh, uh, recursion. Now one more thing about recursion is remember that we are passing unsigned long long. So this is like 8 bytes getting pushed all the time onto the stack so that that can be rewinded again. Now if you have huge uh, objects which you want to push over recur uh, in during recursion then you are in a soup because those big objects will eat up stack very fast. Therefore, when you use recursion, make sure whatever you are passing to your function, that should be very small and your recursion level should not be too deep. If your recursion level is too deep, right now how many levels we have? We have only five levels, but think in thousand uh, recursion uh, levels. So that will render your 8 MB stack to like 8 KB stack for each step. But if you are passing objects bigger than 8 KB, certainly you are going to overflow your stack and then you will receive a 6 V. So with that, I'll end this discussion on factorial uh, using recursion. In our next part, I'll just uh, uh, show a small video on uh, calculating uh, Fibonacci number using recursion also only. And then we'll proceed with more uses of functions. Thanks for watching the video and never forget to keep uh, your programming levels uh, tight you keep programming uh, right code every day and that is the only way to become a good programmer and <coughs> uh, I hope that you might have made progress by this time and might have understood still we are only covering basics once the basics are covered I will try to take some complicated problems and create videos for those thanks for watching the video